Why do you think it's important to minimize suffering in the third world? Why do you think it's important to have moral issues? Why? Well, now you're sort of imputing things I didn't say. I, I said it's an important question whether we should do it. Big question, you know. Don't you think so? I mean, <laughs> don't you think that's an important question? I'm asking, I'm asking you, you. I think it's important because, um, well, I think human suffering and human happiness is important. If you're asking, so, if you're asking me to give a kind of presuppositionless argument that terminates in the conclusion that human suffering is important, then I think that, that's actually pretty difficult. So I'm very convinced that human suffering is important, but it's hard to come up with a non-question begging argument that human suffering is important. And now you're smiling because now I need God. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think this is a genuine philosophical issue that we ought to think about. And when we think about it, Seriously, then, I mean, I, I, I don't find myself consoled by trying to address that very important problem by simply saying there's this, there's this very obscure being that is explaining all this. Man, writes Lauren Isley, is the cosmic orphan. He's the only creature in the universe who asks why. Other animals have instincts to guide them, but man has learned to ask questions. Who am I? He asks. Why am I here? Where am I going? Well, ever since the Enlightenment, when modern man threw off the shackles of religion, he's tried to answer those questions without reference to God. But the answers that came back were not exhilarating, but dark and terrible. You are the accidental byproduct of nature, a result of matter, plus time, plus chance. There is no reason for your existence. All you face is death. Modern man thought that in throwing off God, he had freed himself from all that stifled and repressed him. Instead, he discovered that in killing God, he had only succeeded in orphaning himself. For if there is no God, then man's life becomes ultimately absurd. It is without ultimate meaning without ultimate value, without ultimate purpose. I'd like to look at each one of these tonight. First, life is without ultimate meaning. If each individual person passes out of existence when he dies, then what ultimate meaning can be given to his life? Does it really matter whether he ever existed or not? Now, it might be said that his life was important because it influenced others or affected the course of history. But that shows only a relative significance to his life, not an ultimate significance. If all of the events are ultimately meaningless, then what significance is there in influencing any of them? Mankind is destined only to perish in the eventual heat death of the universe. And thus the contributions of the scientist to the advance of human knowledge, the efforts of the doctor to alleviate pain and suffering, the efforts of the diplomat to secure peace in the world, the sacrifices of good people everywhere to better the lot of the human race. In the end, all of these come to nothing. They don't make one bit of difference, not one bit. And therefore each person's life is without ultimate significance. And because our lives are ultimately meaningless, the activities that we fill our lives with are also, in the final analysis, meaningless. The long hours spent in study at the university, our friendships, our interests, our jobs, our relationships, all of these are, in the final analysis, ultimately meaningless. This is the horror of modern man. Because he ends in nothing, he ultimately is nothing. The French existentialists Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus also understood this. Sartre portrayed life in his play No Exit as hell. The final line of the play are the words of resignation, well, let's get on with it. Hence, Sartre writes elsewhere of the nausea of existence. Man, he says, is adrift in a boat without a rudder on an endless sea. Camus also saw life as absurd. 
Life, he said, is like a man doomed for all eternity to roll a boulder up a hill only to have it continually roll back down again, over and over and over again. At the end of his brief novel, The Stranger, Camus' hero discovers in a flash of insight that life has no meaning and that there is no God to give it one. The French biochemist Jacques Monod seemed to echo these sentiments when he wrote in his work Chance and Necessity, man finally knows that he is alone in the indifferent immensity of the universe. Thus, if there is no God, then life itself becomes ultimately meaningless. Man and the universe are without ultimate significance. Anybody who doesn't think that the question of the existence of God is important, I think needs to take a heavy dose of French existentialist philosophy. Read the atheist French philosophers like Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus, who thought that in the absence of God, life is absurd, without meaning, value, or purpose. I have never read a more poignant description of the human predicament than in the writings of authors like these. Or Friedrich Nietzsche, the 19th century atheist who proclaimed the death of God and uh, predicted an, an, the advent of nihilism once this realization was uh, widespread. I think these authors provide a very, very uh, gripping analysis of the human predicament in the absence of God and therefore it's just absolutely vital that each of us think hard about this question because every day we wake up, we answer by how we live, whether or not we think objective moral values exist, there's meaning in life, there's purpose to my existence and so forth. These questions are unavoidable. Man cannot live consistently and happily as though life were without meaning, value, and purpose. The finite world alone is insufficient to maintain a happy, and consistent life. But that throws us on to the third and final alternative, and this is to challenge the worldview of modern man, to maintain that God does exist and that life does have meaning, value, and purpose. This is the position of biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity thus provides the solution to the predicament of modern man. For according to the Christian worldview, God does exist and life does not end at the grave. And therefore, biblical Christianity provides the two necessary prerequisites for a happy and consistent life, God and immortality. According to the Christian worldview, life does have meaning because mankind is made in the personal image of God and our destiny is to know God and enjoy him and his love forever. Life has value because God's own holy and righteous nature is the absolute standard of right and wrong, good and evil. And that nature is expressed toward us in the form of his divine commandments, which constitute for us our moral duties. And thus the moral choices we make now in this life are filled with an eternal significance. Finally, life has purpose. As the Westminster Catechism says, the end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And thus, biblical Christianity succeeds precisely where atheism breaks down. The cosmic orphan can come home.